Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. A common question when working with a distributed application with multiple services is how you provide guarantees between services for a business process. When working with a traditional monolith in an asset compliant database, you use a transaction. If something goes wrong, you roll back. I'll explain how you can use the reservation pattern to provide a time bound lock between services without needing a distributed transaction. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. The most common example of this is needing a unique constraint. But the problem here is we have multiple services, a part of some business process, that not all of them can contain that unique constraint. Likely one of them will be consistent, but for example, say we have a user registration where a unique constraint is on a username or an email address. If this spans multiple services, this user registration, at the very beginning, we may check to see, okay, is that username unique? It is, continue on. But at the very end of it, do we know that somebody else concurrently hasn't also taken that username? So this isn't just as simple as having a unique constraint because it needs to span this entire business process that spans multiple services. To better illustrate the problem and the solution, I'm going to show something that happens in the real world all the time. And this just happened to me a few weeks ago. I placed an online order to a store, a big box store, locally. My order online was for pickup. So it wasn't getting shipped to me. I had to go to the store to pick it up. Now here's the issue is that when I placed this order, it said that there was only one available of this product. How do I know when I can go pick it up if it's actually going to be there? Well, this is because of the reservation pattern. Someone at the store received my order, my online pickup order, and then had to go to the shelf to see if it was still there, if the item was actually available, and then reserve it for me, meaning they take the item off the shelf and put it aside for my order. So here you can see that that's exactly what happened, is this is my confirmation email of my order, but it says they'll email me back when it's ready for pickup. And that means because they've actually reserved and got a hold of the item from the shelf and took it off and reserved it for me. Now, once they've actually done that, they've triggered an event that sent out an email to me that says, now my order is ready for pickup. And the interesting thing here is that you can see in this uh, lower box here is it says, we recommend that you pick up your item within seven days um, when it's ready for pickup. Uh, if not, you'll be refunded and the item will be placed back on the shelf. So this is an expiry. It's basically a kind of a time bound lock where they're gonna reserve this item for me for seven days. And if I don't come pick up my order, which essentially completes the order, then my order will be canceled, I'll be refunded, and the item will be available for somebody else to basically take off the shelf. So we can use this real world example of reservation and apply that to my example of needing a unique constraint on a username. So through our user registration process, at the very beginning of it, we can reserve the username that the user is requesting. And we can set an expiry on it. That means that they have to complete the registration in a given period of time. Basically, we're putting kind of a, a lock on it for a given period of time. So once they complete that user registration process, we acknowledge to the reservation system that we're complete. However, if the user never actually finished the registration process, what will happen is after our expiry or timeout, we'll then allow somebody else later on to use that username. Again, this is really no different than my product example is that if we didn't go pick it up after a period of time, somebody else can go buy that item. So there's three different behaviors that a reservation system needs to implement. You need to be able to reserve whatever we're trying to reserve, to confirm or validate that that reservation is still valid, and expire or release that reservation after a given period of time. Thank you to all my developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. I really do appreciate the support. They'll get access to all the source code I'm about to show, as well as a private Discord server. If you're interested in joining, check out the links in the description. First, I'm gonna illustrate this in an in-process synchronous way. Then I'm gonna show this in an asynchronous message-driven way that more is like the real world because this is a long running business process. So just to illustrate this, I have a user registration and I have a register method. What we do here is we have a registration, and I'll show it in a second, where we're gonna reserve that username. So this is checking to see if it's even available, and if it can reserve it, then it returns a bool. Once we get past this, I have some logic in here, um, just for testing purposes. When I run the actual application to demo it, you'll see why, because it shows the expiry and how that works. 
So now that we know we've reserved the account, our username is unique and it's available to us, we then create our account, we save it with our repository, and then after we've saved it, then we go back to the reservation to tell it it's complete and that nobody else can use it anymore. So now actually looking at the reservation, it has kind of the three properties that I mentioned. We can reserve, we can complete, and we can expire. So reserving is just doing our unique constraints on whether the username has actually been registered or if it's reserved. Um, if we get by that, we can actually add it to our reserve. And here's where we're actually adding our timeout. So I just have a task that run where we're setting a delay and then I'm calling expire. So after a period of time, um, whether we've registered or not, we've confirmed that reservation, um, I'm just gonna call uh, remove. It may be there, it may not be there, that's fine. And the same thing for complete, we make sure that everything is there, it's still reserved. If it is, then we remove it from our reserved list, we can add it to our registered list. So this is kind of the simplistic example of using the registration. So let me run this and illustrate how it works and how it works in combination with the expiry. So I have the application running to illustrate this. So I'm gonna register my username of Derek and that completes, that's no big deal. I can do it again and we can see that it's failed because we're actually hitting a reserve and we've actually checked that this is, has our unique constraint on it and we've already registered it. Now what I've added here is for testing purposes, I have this username of test and I've actually added so that I can call it more than once. When I call this the first time, we're actually gonna hit this and we're gonna turn false, which means that we've created our reservation for that username, but we never completed the actual registration process and created the account. So because there's a five second expiry, after five seconds, um, I won't actually hit this if statement and we'll complete on, which kind of illustrates again that after the expiry, somebody else can try to register that username. So let's register test, it's gonna fail. I'm gonna do it within five seconds again. It's still reserved, but now that I've waited more than five seconds, we can see that it's um, expired and now my registration is actually complete. So a more realistic, real world example is using a message or event-driven way to deal with this. So here I'm using end service bus as an example, and I have this user registration. Basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna coordinate from various events that occur through our business process to then invoke other commands in other parts of our system. Again, all asynchronous using messaging. So to start off with here, the way this gets kicked off is that when a user registration started event happens, that's what we're gonna to do to actually send our command to reserve a username. The reserve username handler, which I will be showing here, will then publish an event that the username has been reserved. We'll then, same thing, pick that up, a part of this coordination, and then send the command for creating our user account. We know we can create the user account because we have reserved our username. We know that it's unique for us at this moment. So then from there I have, once the user account has actually been created, that event has been published, we're picking that one up. I have some logic here related to um, kind of the same testing logic around the username of tests, just to illustrate the expiry. Um, from there, if that passes, we're gonna confirm our username reservation. So we'll send that off. And then once our username has been registered, we'll kind of kind of just complete this business process. So I added a bunch of different breakpoints. Um, let me run this and illustrate how it's actually running in a demo. All right, so the app's running and let's go through the same kind of testing path here. So I'm gonna specify username Derek. So here we're picking up our event for registration started and we're gonna call the reserve username. So I'm now in the handler for that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this username res uh, reservation, which is exactly the same as the other one. But what I'm also doing here is this is how I'm doing the expiries. I'm creating a message with a delayed delivery of 120 seconds. So that's when we're gonna expire it. And then we're gonna publish our event for username reserved. So now that our username reserved event is published, we're picking that up. We're gonna create our user account. So here we're creating our user account, really not doing anything, just publishing that event. And now we are getting to back to our coordinator to handle this. And we're gonna send our confirmation for our username. So now we're confirming our username reservation because our order has been created, everything's good. And now we're done. So if I look at the console here, we can see that we reserved username Derek, we created our account for Derek, we confirmed our reservation for Derek, and then our registration was complete for Derek. So let's do the same thing now, but with the expiry with test. So to test the expiry, I'm gonna run this all over again. We're gonna create Derek. I removed the breakpoints so we can see everything completed fine. 
Now I'm gonna send tests, but the thing here is that this is actually going to stop kind of along the way where we failed to actually create the account. But remember that we still have our reservation. So if I try to reserve again, nope, that username is already exists because it's still reserved. But I've added a breakpoint here, now you can see, where our expiry is kicking in after 10 seconds, I changed it to, and now we're gonna expire that username. So I can run this through, and if I go back to the console, so we've expired that test, now I can try to re-register it. And because I had some logic in there that when I rerun it, it will work, we actually completed our registration. The reservation pattern is used in the real world all the time. We can leverage that in code to provide some time-bound guarantees between services for a business process. It's kind of like a limited lock. And I say that because then it could expire or it could change that reservation. So in my real world example, I placed an online order for pickup at a store. That reservation basically prevented me from wasting my time from driving to the store when it wasn't maybe even available. They reserved it and guaranteed me for a period of time that it was gonna be there, that I could go pick it up. So sometimes you just need to look to the real world for a solution. Now there are a couple caveats that you need to be concerned with. The first is that it provides or it is a single point of failure. So if something's not working correctly with your reservation system, you're gonna have some issues there because whatever relies on it is gonna be failing. The other is depending on how you're dealing with this coordination of events and commands and what's starting everything is you can get into a deadlock situation. So it's something to be aware of. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.